God bless everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Sesum. We want to welcome you to our weekly Bible study. Amen. We are studying. Amen. We're doing actually an exhaustive study on the subject of being heirs of God. Amen. Tonight, we're going to be more specific with this topic. And we're going to deal with the fact that we are heirs of everything. Amen. We're heirs of everything according to the word of God. We give God the praise. Now, we're going to be uh, spending some time in the book of Galatians, the book of Romans. Amen. And so if you have your Bibles with you, why don't you go ahead and turn to Galatians and amen. I'll go ahead and open in prayer. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We say that this is the day that you made, and we shall rejoice, and we do rejoice in it. And we are, hallelujah, we, we rejoice and we are glad in it, oh God. God, we are grateful for the opportunity to share the word of the kingdom with these, your beloved people. God, we thank you, Father God, hallelujah, for all the technology that you have blessed us with, Father God, and able to minister the word of God outside of the four walls of Bethesda Revival Center. God, I'm asking your anointing, your grace upon me to teach tonight. God, I'm asking, Father God, that those that would view this, that you would give them ears to hear, a mind to understand, receive and believe and to act on it in faith. Now we come against every foe to faith in his spirit that will try to hinder us. We rebuke you and we cast you down. We claim victory and good success in this endeavor. And those that agree, say amen. Praise God. We give God the praise. Hallelujah. Once again, uh, me and First Lady enjoyed us a little week off. We really need another week, actually. But we do give God the praise, amen, for uh, giving us a little bit of rest, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, once again, we're dealing with the topic of being heirs of God. And tonight we're going to be more specific. We're going to deal with the topic of being uh, heirs of everything. Now, I do want to remind you that this is, in fact, a review. We've gone through this, you know, already. But we want to go through it again. I felt led of the Holy Spirit, or I am led of the Holy Spirit to go through it again. Praise God. Hallelujah. To ensure that we have this information, we have this knowledge, we have this revelation written, uh, amen, indelibly on our hearts. Amen. Glory to God. And so what we uh, uh, endeavor to do is to renew our minds, amen, to this truth. Amen. And see ourselves as heirs of God. Somebody say amen to that. Praise God. Next, we want to discover what is in fact included as part of our inheritance. We need to know. Praise God. And last but not least, we really do need to learn how to take our inheritance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you have, if you have your Bibles open to Galatians, we're going to be in Galatians chapter 4. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to go ahead and start reading from verse number 1. Amen. Galatians chapter 4, verse number 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Amen. This is speaking to, we understand, glory to God, hallelujah, that, uh, when, when Paul is teaching the church in Galatia, what he was dealing with, amen, glory to God, is when we were under, when they were under the law, amen, glory to God, he's really showing the difference, the contrast as to being under the law and being under grace, amen, praise the Lord. But now, how does that apply to us, amen? Of course, we're under grace, amen, but also, there's an analogy that we can draw from this particular verse. And when it says, now that the heir, what's an heir? An heir is an individual or someone who receives an inheritance 
by right of birth. Okay. Now let's 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 look at this thing. It's saying the individual who receives an inheritance by right of birth, as long as he is a child or unable or not of the proper age or maturity level to accept the what can I say? How can I say the, the responsibilities, uh, okay, or the weight, amen, uh, uh, of, of what it takes to, amen, uh, possess the inheritance. It says that that child differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. In other words, <clears throat> I we have uh, things that when we pass on, we want to pass them on to our children or on to our grandchildren. And so when we have our will written out, or come on, our last will and testament, what we do, we we put uh, uh, things in there that say such as if the uh, the grandchild is uh, until they receive until they reach an age of uh, such and such and such, twenty one years old, they cannot uh, possess this inheritance. Or we may put something in there, some statements that if they find themselves on drugs, on alcohol, or they're being irresponsible in some way, shape, or fashion, then they cannot possess it. They cannot possess the inheritance, praise the Lord, until they uh, change their behavior. Amen. And so this scripture is letting us know, as long as we are immature or ignorant concerning the word of God, we are no different, even though we are the inheritors, even though we come on, even though we, 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 we is ours, we cannot take advantage of it. All right, let's keep going. It says, but as under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. It's like when you, you, when you got saved, amen, everything belongs to you now. You're in Christ. Come on. You you are in you have received an inheritance, amen. But unless you when since you don't know that you're still even you could have received Jesus as your savior, but until your mind gets renewed to the truth which is found in the Word of God, you're still going to be you. There's no change. And, and how can I say it? Yes, uh, you've got uh, uh, saved. Okay, so if you can understand what I'm saying, you, you're in Christ now. But you still need to know the word of God. There still has to be a change in your life. There's got to be a change, a change in your thinking patterns. You've got to start to think kingdom wise. Amen. And so as a result, the same pr the programming that you had while you were in the world, you're still functioning under that old programming. All right. I'll just, I'll just say that. Verse four, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. All right. Now, I know individuals who uh, married someone that already had a, a children or, or a child. Okay. And they loved that child. And so what they did was they adopted the child as their own. In other words, even though technically you can say they are a stepchild, but they gave the child their name. Huh? Or there's the, the, the times where there's a child, uh, something happened with the family, uh, so if something didn't work out for the sort of child finds itself uh, in, in foster care where, well, a loving couple may come along. Amen. Perhaps they couldn't have children of their own or maybe they just want another child or what, for, or for whatever reason. They see a child that they like. They fall in love with the child. They adopt that child. Now that that child is adopted, that child has the same rights and privileges Come on, just like they were their own biological children. Come on, the, the, the Bible is letting us know that we have been redeemed. Come on, and we have received the, and the idea, the goal is to receive the adoption as 
sons of God. Amen. Verse six. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. In other words, there's an identifier. There's an identifier. We identify with God as our father. Amen. Glory to God. We acknowledge him. Come on, somebody. Verse seven. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. Come on. In other words, glory to God, when you get to that place, you're no longer a servant. You, some translations say slave. You're no longer a slave or no longer a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir uh, of God through Christ. A amen. Glory to God. Now, I know some of y'all get tired of hearing me say this, but I have to say it. The day you were born again, you became an heir. Amen. Glory to God of a fortune. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The moment you gave your, your life to Christ. Amen. Glory to God. You were born again into the richest family. Amen. Ever known. Amen. Glory to God. Now, like myself, many of you out there, amen. You made many mistakes and it was because of you didn't know what you had. Come on. You didn't know what you can do. You didn't know how to possess it. And that's what we're endeavoring to get to, to discover what is in our inheritance and how to take our inheritance. But you didn't know. So as a result, the enemy ran roughshod over us. We, we made mistakes. We fell off into sin. Many of us even backslid. Amen. There's people in the church today. Amen. They, if, if they were to pass today, they, were, they would go to heaven. But there are things that God wants you to enjoy right now. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah, glory to God. And we possess them by faith. Amen, glory to God. And so uh, just like I made mistakes or sinned, I sinned badly. Praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. And most of it was because I didn't know what was mine. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I had. I didn't know where I was at. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so we're endeavoring to, to, to carterize that flow. We're endeavoring to cut that off, to stop that, amen, that, that, you know, that, 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 that we're trying, we're trying to cut it off from that from happening to anyone else, amen, by giving up the truth, amen, letting them know who they are, what they have, where they're at, all of that, according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, we've been born again. Uh, and we have a rich inheritance. Now let's go to the book of First Peter. Let me get myself a bookmark. Let's go to First Peter. Yes, we are endeavoring to change some lives. We encourage you, as always, to be in your word. Follow along with our Bible studies. These Bible studies, I teach them in a fashion where uh, they're not all that complicated to grasp. You know, I do it intentionally. I intentionally uh, uh, don't use, uh, you know what I'm saying, words where it's hard to understand. We're trying to make this very, very plain to, to you. Amen. First Peter. I'm going to start uh, at chapter one, and I'm going to read from verse one through verse four. And then we're going to look at verses three and four in uh, two different uh, translations. Amen. For your edification and your understanding. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, these places are what are found, amen, on what would be what we would call modern day Turkey, or some of the people call it Asia Minor, all right? But it's Turkey, amen, glory to God. Uh, and he's writing this letter to them, to, to, to the, uh, the, the saints that, you know, went out there. We, I, would, I would call them, uh, well, to the saints that was there. I'll say that. Okay. Uh, actually, in, in uh, a lot of African Americans or individuals, they call they use the word diaspora. Diaspora. There was individuals that were scattered abroad. Okay. 
from African descent. Well, in this sense, the, when he says to the strangers scattered throughout uh, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, these are the saints that were scattered, let's say from Jerusalem, amen, from Rome, they were scattered, amen, glory to God, remember, because of persecution, amen, so we would call that a form of diaspora, all right, let's keep going, verse 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. This is important. Grace and peace is multiplied unto us as we gain knowledge, as we come into understanding of what's ours. All right. Verse three, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, that this is dealing with being born again, hath begotten us. So he's talking to the saints. He's talking to the church. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, who hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance, here we see that word inheritance, to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want to read verse 3 and 4 from the Amplified Bible, first of all. Praised. This is the Amplified. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, Amplified. Praised, honored, blessed, be God the Father. Excuse me. Praised, honored, blessed, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, exclamation point. By his boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We've been born anew into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay. It is imperishable, unsullied, and unfading, reserved in heaven for you. Uh, let's look at the Eastern Standard Version of uh, verse 3 and 4 of First Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, watch this, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Amen. So we're establishing once again uh, that we are in fact heirs of God. Now, Peter uses the word, amen, glory to God. But he said we have been begotten again letting us know that this inheritance is a result of our being born again or born into the family of God or the household of faith. Amen. So we are heirs by birth. Get that. You are an heir by birth. It is in fact your birthright. It is my birthright. It is the body of Christ's birthright. Come on, receive it right now. It is your birthright. It is my birthright. We are heirs by birth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. Hmm. We're getting ready to see another word here. Uh, and that word is joint heirs. Joint heirs. We're going to see that when we read from Romans. And then we'll define that 
and then we'll move forward and we'll read those these uh, verses that we'll read in several other translations. We're in, so we're in Romans chapter eight, Amen, uh, <clears throat> verse twelve. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you should die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Mm -hmm. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Sounds familiar, huh? Sounds like, amen. Glory to God. It sounds like Galatians. Amen. Uh, chapter four and verse six, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Look at verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, not trying to be, but we are the children of God. Amen. We are the children of God. Come on, keep going. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs. We've already defined what an, what an heir was. Heirs of God. We've established that we are heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. This is this new word I want you to deal with. That we're going to deal with. Joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Now, let's let's. what is a joint heir? A joint heir is one who is in union together with, with an inheritor. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, oh, God help me preach this. One who is in union together with an inheritor. Amen. Glory to God. If my parents leave something to me, since me and first lady, Renee Sessom, amen, are husband and wife, our, by virtue of our union, we would be joint heirs. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We're joint heirs with Christ. Christ received an inheritance. We're joint heirs with him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What he has, we have. Oh, God, you got to catch that. What he has, we have. The power he has. We've been born again. We have it. The, the grace, we have it. The mercy, we have it. That resurrection life, we have it. Matter of fact, we can prove this point by backing up to and. Uh, in Romans chapter 8 to verse 11. Let's read that together. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So he, Christ lives in us. Come on. We are joint heirs. What he has, we have. The resurrection power is you in you is in you and I. A couple uh, weeks ago, when I preached the resurrection message, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With the, I, I gave a title: the power to overcome evil. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I gave two words. One was the Kratos power, K R A T O S, and the next word was the Indunamao. The Indunamao. In other words, not just enough power to get you by, but enough power, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, to overwhelm, to overwhelm the, and overcome the situation and the circumstance. The endunamao power is when Jesus rose from the dead, amen, glory to God, and the individuals that were in the graves, they came up to, oh God help me, hallelujah, glory to Jesus tonight. It's the Kratos power, glory, glory to Jesus' name, glory to God, it's the power to change. It's the power to overcome. It's the, the, it's the power to defeat. Amen. Anything the enemy can throw our way. I give God the praise for that. Amen. Glory to God. So now uh, we're joint heirs with Christ. We, 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 God endeavors to, for you and I to function in that same power. Praise God. And that same ability to receive that same inheritance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Uh, the Amplified Bible reads uh, verse 17 this way. It says, and if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Amen. And only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. What is the suffering? The suffering is to stay in there by faith, believing God, irregardless of what the natural things try to, five senses try to tell you. It's the, it is the, it, come on somebody, the, the, the suffering is to maintain my faith posture, my faith position, to stand on the word of God, to be steadfast, to be immovable, always abounding in the word of the work of the Lord. Amen, glory to God. Irregardless of how I feel, I am healed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. That is the struggle. Praise the Lord. That is the suffering. Amen, glory to God. Let's see what the New Living Translation, how it reads verse 17. The New Living Re Re Translation of Romans 8. It says, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. It goes on to say, in fact, comma, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. In other words, we are heirs of all the heavy weight of things that God has. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Now let's go someplace else. Let's go, go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. Glory to Jesus' name. Ephesians. Bless God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let me put my notes over here. I like them over here. Glory to Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 2. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hmm. Let's start at verse one. And you hath he quickened. Now, what does the word quicken mean? It means he has made us alive. Come on, somebody. That's a miracle right there. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That's what happened. See, when you get born again, your nature changes. You get a change in your nature. Now your nature is that of righteousness. Come on. It's of righteousness. When you believe on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your nature is of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's letting us know that what we used to be prior to being uh, 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 saved or born again, we are no longer that. So, 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 <laughs> my suggestion to you is stop identifying with that. Come on, identify with the word of God. Identify yourself, you know, your identity should be with being in Christ. Come on, in your life, hidden in God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's keep, let me keep going. I didn't mind, I gotta teach. Verse four, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Quickened us together. We're joint heirs. We're, we're sharing this thing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In verse 6 it says, and hath raised us up together. Somebody say together. Hallelujah. Together. Come on, joint, we're, we're, we're joint heirs and raised us up together and made us sit together. Come on, sit together, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's why I say we need to know where we're at. Come on, somebody, at all times, we need to be consciously aware that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. And, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You need to know where you at. You need to know who you are. You need to know what you have. Come on, somebody. You need to know what you can do. Come on. You are an heir of God. Hallelujah. We are joint heirs together with Christ. Uh, verse 7 that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen. The Amplified Bible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Uh, woo, this is going to be good. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 from the Amplified reads this way. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together. Somebody say together. Come on. Giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Verse seven, he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, based on, glory to God, what we just read, we have been, we are, sit, we are seated together. Come on, somebody. In heavenly places, we have been quickened together with Christ. Come on. And, and God's goal is to show us the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. His kindness toward us, directed, focused. Come on, somebody say focused. It's focused on us. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that's, a, that's a psalm that says, my, my, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Come on, somebody. In other words, God, our, if God had a mind, we are full. He, our mind is full. He, he, we are always on his mind. Glory to God. Glory to God. So his inheritance for us is immeasurable. You cannot quantify it. Come on. It's limitless. So therefore, we should not be placing limitations on God. God can do anything. Nothing is too hard for God. God does, come on, your choke, your choke point is not God's choke point. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, if it's not there, all God has to do is say it is. And we, as his children, that's what he's expecting us to do. He's asking us, he's, listen, listen, he expects us to echo his word. Whatever his word says, that's what he wants us to say. Come on, come on. His inheritance in my life is immeasurable. His inheritance in my life is limitless. His inheritance in my life is surpassing anything that I could ever dream of or imagine. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once again, we're doing a review. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my music on. Amen. Glory to God. We are heirs of everything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Heirs right now. Right now we're heirs. Right now we're heirs. Right now we're heirs. This is important. Amen. Glory to God. We are, in fact, the children of God. We are, come on, we are heirs of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, First Lady and I, we got three children. We got grandchildren. Amen. We do have cer certain possessions. When we pass, if the, if, 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 we, if the rapture don't come and we pass, the, what we, our possessions are going to be passed down to our children and the grandchildren. Amen. They're, they're our heirs. So therefore, we're heirs 
of God. Hallelujah. How did they become heirs? By birth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And, and then, then when you take the three, amen, glory to God, they're joint heirs together. Come on, somebody. Dion is a joint heir with his sister, Tiffany. Tiffany's a joint heir with her brother, Reggie. Reggie's a joint heir with his brother, Dion. They're joint heirs. Come on, somebody. They share the possessions. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for yet another opportunity to share, Lord God, your word, your kingdom word, your truth, your faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray, Father God, that those who are viewing, that are listening, Father God, that they are receiving revelation, knowledge, glory to God, concerning what is theirs. Father, I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, praise the Lord, that we all begin to pay more attention to what your word says, that we believe your word more than anything else, oh God. Your word says we're healed and we are healed. Your word calls us the delivered and we are delivered. Your word calls us sanctified and we are sanctified. Your word calls us justified and we are justified. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us joint seating with Christ. Hallelujah. In the heavenly places right now in Christ Jesus. We thank you right now, Father. We thank you for the privilege, the privilege, hallelujah, of being sons of God in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now. Father, as I'm sitting here, Father God, I pray, Father God, for those who may be viewing, Father God, I pray for healing for myself, for anybody else. I pray for healing. I pray for wholeness. I pray for doors to open that there previously appeared to be shut. I pray, Father God, for new knowledge, new revelation in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for growth and maturity in the church. I thank you, Father God, for Patrick. I bless him right now from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, to the span of his outstretched arm. I say in Jesus' name, hallelujah, he receives his inheritance. No weapon formed against him prospers in the precious name of the Lord. I pray, I praise you, Father, for his life. I thank you for his victory. His, this is the victory for him that overcomes the world. Even his faith, oh God, in the precious name of the Lord. Well, God bless you. This is Pastor Sesame. Amen. I'm the senior pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. Once again, our church is located at 16681 Wood Road in the city of Riverside, 92508. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tomorrow we will be having prayer. Praise the Lord. Glory to God for real. Hallelujah. Via Zoom teleconference. Our prayer starts at 12 noon. Amen. If those of you that have prayer requests, why don't you send your prayer requests in? We have a team of intercessors that know how to get a prayer through. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thursday, we will be picking up food and we endeavor to fill our a freezers and our, our, our treasuries with, with good things to help our people. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. And we'll meet again on Sunday at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary. Okay, so we say God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We miss you. And we can't wait to see you face to face. And this is how we dismiss. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the church say amen. Once again, on behalf of myself and First Lady Renee Sessom, we want to say we love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you face to face. Be blessed, beloved. Be blessed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet to the span of your outstretched arm. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Bye-bye.